Hey guys, uh, we've got a pretty fun build here coming up. Uh, well, not coming up. This is the video and this is the build and it's exciting. Yeah, so this is my second time recording this video, so I, I might speak a little fast. I apologize. I accidentally used the wrong microphone last time, so I'm being very careful this time. But yeah, if you saw the thumbnail, we are going for the Tiger Beetle Army. Now, Tiger Beetle is a tier 4 pet uh, that jumps at, to the front and deals some damage when there's an empty front space. And we're going to be having a lot of fun with that. Uh, yeah, I think Tiger Beetle is a very good tempo pick in Super Auto Pets, but it's got some other uses, some niche or questionably great uses that make for quite a lot of fun and that's what I'm going for today. Yeah, so you can see here I've got a hatching chick, dromedary, and um, most importantly to this I've got a nice spider. And that spider is going to be pretty handy here as I'm going to roll more spiders. And one strategy I want to touch on that is a new thing I've been doing in my builds ever since Unicorn Pack is using Spider Pill. Now, usually Spider Pill is a bit of like a gambling thing because it's like, okay. And to be clear, I, I still used it, but I use it a lot more now and often level it up to three. Reason for that being that uh, I can much more likely guarantee value out of it as usually it's gambling, it's like, okay, if I got a bad tier three, that was a bad investment, you know? But with the addition of the new tier one uh, water of youth food, which transforms something into something of the same tier, you can get a lot of value out of it. Now, all that said, I don't do that here. Baboon's already a fantastic hit. Uh, Baboon's really handy. Now, unfortunately, on none of those level ups, I got a tiger beetle, which is, the heart and blood, heart and soul, the heart and soul sounds a lot better, which is the heart of, and soul of this build, but you will see that, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be showing it to you. Now, frozen there, buffed a little bit by the dromedary, it's gonna get buffed here a lot more soon, is the kraken. And you can see there I rolled two tiger beetles, which is really nice. Uh, a lot of these runs died because I didn't get the tiger beetle early enough. But yeah, Kraken is the anti-armadillo, and it's really useful if you're going for uh, in-battle snipes, uh, as it just removes health from things, so they are easily knocked out by stuff. And Skunk is going to do the same thing here. You're going to see I took off six health from that Okapi, and I mean, we don't care about our own health. That's fine. We've got two five fives that are running the squad. So, yeah, I, I think I did actually just roll past something that we will be grabbing, but... Uh, also, let me know what you think of the speed of the videos. I, I try to make it so there's not really any downtime. Now, there, you're gonna see something that is probably the most run jump pet, for good reason. That's definitely the best jump pet, and that is... A pet that doesn't jump at all, but bust jump pets, and that is the Frogman. Now, Frogman got a small buff from plus one, plus two, to plus two, plus two, which actually comes out to be pretty, uh, pretty great when it is uh, permanent scaling in battle. But on top of that, what really made Frogman shine is that all of the overpowered stuff got nerfed. That's the, uh, the bigger part of this. But yeah, so you're going to see a lot of Frogman. Now this build here does not use any Frogman, even though we are running Jump. This build here uses Pteranodon. Now Pteranodon is actually how I conceived this. I was playing some Golden Pack, I was like, oh, you know what? Pteranodon is a cool unit that I don't see enough people use. Oh, I'll, I'll pause here to talk about that Onion there. Onion allows your pet to jump to the back uh, before when it gets to the front, which allows our Tiger Beetle to go off twice which is quite handy. It does backfire, but I'll talk about that in the second game. But yeah, Pteranodon used to just make faint pets abilities trigger again, which was a little too good. It was very good. Now, it su when a friend faints, it summons that friend behind it uh, at the same level at 1-1. So it doesn't work with things like 
summons anymore because if you're summoning something you don't have space to summon another thing 99% of the time. But it does come in handy with jump pets, especially if you have a front space open. After that thing faints, it can just jump straight to the front and you can supply yourself with an armor. And here you're going to be able to see that work out more because I got the experience from that Salmon of Wisdom. And who can tell with all of the health being removed, this is really, it's quite viable. It's not crazy good, but it is quite viable. Now you can see here per with the perks, I'm really just prioritizing these pets living because the big thing that breaks this team is snipes also pushing and uh i learned from this afterwards and didn't put my pteranodon in that slot after this but it uh got pulled forward so i didn't get a chance to summon anything so the build didn't work but we still won which means we are on to nine wins and two health and this build is this build was really fun it, it's it's cool to have your own little mini army now, here I'm using the Kraken and the Skunk to enable this. Now, look at just how much stuff the Kraken and the Skunk took away for allowing the Tiger Beetle to clean up. And the Tiger Beetle completely swept that whole team. But yeah, I'll get us into the second game and we'll talk more. So yeah, here we are in the second game. And I mentioned that I used Skunk and Kraken there, obviously. And... They're great, but I think there are a lot of other enablers. Now, this game, I'm going to be going for different enablers. Also, there's going to be some cameos here. Uh, if I don't point it out in this voiceover, we run into Rev GT twice. Shout out to Rev, and there will be a surprise cameo at the end. <laughs> but yeah, I guess it's not that much of a surprise. I digress. So last time, we used a different enabler with the Kraken and the Skunk. Enabler meaning just something that allows the team to be something good enough to win. Also, selling those three ducks there into this is a just a, such a great turn. Usually I prefer Duckling because all of the health is localized on one unit and I can buff something really strong. But if you're buying a lot of pets, oh, shout out to Riff. If you're buying a lot of pets, uh, it actually comes in quite nice. So. I grab Toad here, and Toad's going to be our enabler this round, because uh, we're going for ailments. We'll be grabbing another ailment pet later on to help with that. But Toad works well when you're doing a lot of like what I consider chip damage, so a bunch of instances of damage rather than just you know big slams. You see here, it is enough to pull us through. And yeah, now there are other enablers. Actually, the one I ran the most but didn't get a win with. Actually, I did get a win with it, but it was too fast, so I didn't get the Pteranodon time. But uh, Wolverine is another fantastic one. If you have Wolverine in your uh, second slot when the Tiger Beetle jumps to the front, it'll get the damage buff. Uh, this one's a bit weirder, a little less consistent, but it is, in my opinion, a lot more fun. And yeah, you can see here... I didn't get a Tiger Beetle on level up again, but I did get a Manatee. Manatee's some nice scaling. I know I'm going to be keeping my Toad, so I'm buffing it. And, oh, shout out to Rev again. I don't know why he's got so many rocks on your team, but you should go to his channel and ask him. Speaking of strange teams, I ran into Grounded today. Not on, not in this video, but just in general. Oh, Tiger Beetle. And it was... Turn three, and he had two, two, two spiders, and actually both of those spiders got ant eaters, so he almost beat me. But yeah, if you're interested in whatever that's about, you should go check out Grounded as well. Uh, but yeah, here we are, leveling up our Tiger Beetle into Frogman. Now I did say our t this team doesn't need Frogman, and it's not on the final team, but the scaling's really nice, and it is. I'm more than happy to just take it for a while. You can see here, we're on six wins and five health now. A very fantastic turn. And we get the onion now. The onion makes the pet jump to the back and then it allows it to jump to the front again. So it's actually tripling the buffs from Frogman. I think that's gonna become meta. Already Frogman's kind of meta. I think we're going to be seeing a lot of Frogman with Jump Pets with Onion here uh, 
or within days, I think that'll be as common as Jerboa teams if you wanna jot that down. We don't get to level up the Blobfish to get too experienced there, but it's fine. And you can see here, it's already a 2020, and uh, this round is gonna be more. Now, unfortunately, this round we go against Leech Camel, which is, believe it or not, still strong. So we do lose that. That's our first loss, I believe. We might have lost our second game in like the pre-round, or didn't really count. Not pre-round, but like the, I think we lost the second round. I'm not sure about that. But yeah, we're gonna get one more turn of Frogman scaling, and then we're gonna try out the, uh, the Manticore as our ailment buffer and should be fun and man that that frogman scaling is really really handy that is just a lot of stats already a 31 31 for very little you know investment is really nice it's really what this build needed i'm surprised i got away without it in my first round yeah unfortunately we get sniped there and snipes again are the biggest weakness of this build and so we are gonna lose here yeah uh eight wins three health now you can see the perks i'm using i'm just trying to try to protect against snipes but i do have a lot of stuff with not a lot of stats now i do have one thing that has plenty with the tiger beetle and you can see here the build working as intended getting all of the summons in now, I did mention that that onion is going to come to bite us, and I'll explain that in a second. I believe it's this round that's going to start becoming a problem. Uh, but yeah, if you see this... Uh, already this team's got snipes, so it's scary. But, I don't know if this is a bug or some weird inconsistency. Sometimes, when a pet jumps to the back, instead of giving it a chance to jump to the front, it just continues on and you lose your pet in the front. That's why I'm not running Pteranodon in my front anymore, because that's a problem. Here we're gonna get Warg bombed. I'm not gonna call it a nuke anymore. It's still really strong. Still way too strong for a, a tier one in my opinion, but it's it has been nerfed, so I will nerf what we call it. But yeah, we've got a level three Pteranodon now and a level two Manticore. I made the most out of that turn, so let's see if we can win. Nine one wins, one health. That is a 100-100 behemoth. You see I jumped to the front, and unfortunately I get that bug. And that bug is actually, I believe, what loses this for us. I'm not certain, but there's more, so hold on. Last night, Grounded messaged me asking if I won and saying that he fought my team. So I asked for his uh, version of events. And here you can see, uh, again, I get the bug. I, I'm going to call it a bug. I can't imagine it's intentional. And it looks really good, but his Nurakabe is actually turning all of the damage that my Tiger Beetle would be doing into nothing. But we win with a 1-1. So shout out to Grounded for making this video possible. Uh, I thought that was so, so cool. And yeah, have a great day. Shout out, shout out to Rev, shout out to Grounded, and Troubadour for the hell of it.